Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A nice easy video to break things back into it. Um, I've seen online this uh, Pentium MMX 233 MHz CPU and I've always been kind of curious to see just how much um, performance gains you get from that extra 33 MHz. Um, I did zero research online, the machine itself is pretty limited that it's going into, it's my classic Socket 7 machine. Um, this thing is responsible for kicking off my vintage computing uh, hobby again um, I've had this machine for probably about seven years or so maybe a bit longer it's got PS2 input compact flash adapter to ID very handy a Matrox uh, Mystique 220 a Voodoo 1 card Ethernet and a Sound Blaster 16 card of course I kept all the screws on the back um, I did not leave just four um, actually I did um, but yeah we'll break it open and I think um, what we'll do is we'll check out some of the benchmarks of some of these games and see if we can eke any more performance out of the Socket 7 platform. But yeah I've always been kind of curious to see just how much extra performance you get from that extra 33 megahertz. It's not a huge amount um, you know but for something this slow um, you never know it might make a little bit of a difference but I believe I'm going to be limited in terms of my graphics as well and the games are going to try on this are going to be um, a bit beyond what the system was designed for anyway um, I've already done all my benchmarks and games and testing like that so um, I'm going straight for the CPU swap here later on we'll check out the games I'm just going to leave that resting up there in that handy hard drive enclosure bay because you know got the compact flash adapter um, just using some isopropyl alcohol and a tissue that's um, you know got from the suspicious uh, tissue box next to my desk and we're just going to clean out the old thermal compound not going for concord points here just want to get most of it off so when I take the chip out I don't have thermal grease all over my fingers which then ends up on your clothes on the case on the desk uh, yeah messy stuff uh, thankfully the CPU is pretty easy to swap on these because this is in the bottom right hand corner of the main board and there is the beastly 200 megahertz CPU. I've had this in here for quite a few years uh, I believe from day one and it's a 2.8 volt chip which is the same voltage as the one we are putting in. So thankfully the changes are minimal that are required for the jumper configuration. Uh, CPU replacement as I said is pretty easy it's just reverse of what we are doing of course I'm going to clean up the surface of the new CPU it seems to have some sticker residue or old thermal compound on there so once again some IPA and a dodgy tissue sort that out no problem everyone's favorite part now is setting the jumpers thankfully though these are pretty easy because the voltage is the same it's really just the clock speed that changes and thankfully looking at this list I've printed out there is only one jumper that needs to be moved to the open position it's JP9 on my motherboard um, and my flatmates it was very hard to do this because my flatmates were making an awful racket must have been panning for gold or something that's what it sounded like And yeah that's why I never use the audio from the videos when I'm filming um, just because I live with like four people and you know well, myself included and there's a lot of noise from the house a little bit of dodgy thermal paste from a no-name brand and the heatsink goes back on without a problem uh, it's very hard to get in there and film of course with my fingers hands being in the way but power it up give it a test and it uh, should be good as gold All right, got our 233 megahertz showing there. Uh, it's all happy, all booting. Um, we're gonna get into um, like four games plus um, Realmark uh, 99, I believe. We're gonna try that out. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what to expect here. I was hoping for a bit of extra performance, but um, yeah, we'll do some side-by-side -side real world gaming here.
the finish line, pal! Yeah, we seem to be good for about an extra FPS, maybe two at best. Um, really no major change to be honest. Uh, Half-Life is another one, um, the system requirements are quite low but it's actually quite a demanding game. So I've still got the uh, Voodoo 1 here, um, it's kind of the fastest PCI card that I've got uh, in terms of graphics. Um, seems to be alright, um, sort of floating around empty spaces, but as soon as the action hits you'll see we'll get into sometimes single digit uh, FPS, so really, if I'm honest, no change here either, and I think this is a combination of um, graphics and CPU. I really think most of these titles that I'm playing are um, really just benefited by Pentium 2 and Voodoo 2, I'd say is kind of, you know, with gaming actually got for this era at least actually you know what I'd consider playable <laughs> Alright, we've got some uh, Quake 2, I did the benchmark and also just wanted to play the game a little bit uh, just to kind of see uh, what the performance was like real world and also the just the benchmark and once again you gain like one FPS so I'd say CPU and definitely GPU are the limiting factor on this one. Um, yeah, I noticed this game was tested back in the day a lot with like Pentium 2s and Voodoo 2s and stuff like that towards the later end of 98 so yeah um socket 7 yeah it was pretty much predictable results here but uh, it's still actually playable um more so than um half-life was so you know it can still do it Well, something a bit more demanding that is well beyond the reach of this uh, machine really is Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the physics uh, where it's at for the, the CPU um, just seems to be, uh, same with Midtown Madness, you know, there's slightly, ever so slightly less uh, stuttering and stuff as, you know, the dynamics of the car change. Although it really didn't help me um, drive any better, as you'll see on the right side is my um, my next attempt really with the faster CPU, so I was sliding around. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I said, I couldn't get an FPS counter to work on this game, I never have been able to, but 
Uh, I'll let you guys just kind of watch and just see side by side what you think. Frame rate's capped at 60 FPS for the um, capture as well, so hopefully that relays into YouTube. Next I'm going to try some sort of synthetic benchmark with 3D Mark 99. Um, be warned this is a flickery, seizurey mess so um, if you're sensitive to that stuff um, yeah it might be best just to look away just briefly because um, I didn't realise that the frame buffer was set to single and it wasn't until watching the slow down you can see the screen uh, is actually redrawing. Um, I just assumed it was a fault or an incompatibility with the Voodoo 1 card I was using. Um, so that was my first mistake and uh, there's a second one which I did which we'll get into next but with it set to double you can see we get a normal image which is nice, no flickery horrible mess. Uh, so that fixed that one up so if you're doing a test like that make sure you turn that to doubled. Uh, so we can see we got four results here, we got the one with the frame buffer which I turned on, I didn't do that before and after the swap so we'll exclude that. And we've got the before uh, the CPU swap with the Voodoo. And this is the second mistake. Um, I accidentally, accidentally left the Matrox uh, card selected on the before test as well. So I think what we'll do just to simplify this, we will exclude the um, Matrox card results just because I didn't do the comparison after you know the swap. So it's pretty easy to just right click and hide that. And I think as well, um, even though it was interesting, I think I'll just exclude that frame buffer uh, change as well, just because we want to keep this tidy. We are splitting hairs on this test, so yeah, we're not talking big gains, uh, that's for sure. But you can see the overview or overall results here. Well, looking at kind of the finer details, we got the before and after the CPU change here, both with the Voodoo graphics selected as a rendering card, 640 by 480 at 16 bit colors. Um, really, the only major difference I'd say is that synthetic CPU um, speed test there. You know, we get a bit more of a bump, but really not a not much at all. And as I said, you get really one, maybe two at best FPS boost in most real world games and things like that. I mean, really, you don't notice it, to be honest. I'm playing the games just in front of me, um, you know, back to back between and before and after. I really actually couldn't tell much. And uh, that really sums up the Socket Sefer platform, really. Um, you know, good for DOS gaming, very early Windows games and things like that. But anything more extreme than that, and it's completely hosed. Um, and to be honest, that's, this is where the um, Pentium 2 and Voodoo 2 era really come into their own. I could see why, you know, the origins is what we know as modern 3D gaming um, came from this era, really. So, makes sense. But yeah, really, to be honest, not worth the extra 33 megahertz. Um, couldn't see a difference at all, and I don't think I ever will. Even with a faster video card, I think we're still going to be limited. But um, yeah, other than that, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look and see what we got, and 
we got an FPS boost by one probably and that's about it anyway thanks for watching guys sorry for the absence been waiting on parts and orders and things like that but uh we'll catch you guys in the next one nice ass baby